So we're only a day and a half away from the Criminal Enterprises DLC dropping in GTA 5 Online. So let's go over everything that's going to be coming out and also every new change that is going to be coming to the game as well. And when I say a day and a half away, I do mean a day and a half away because the DLC does drop on July 26th officially on Tuesday, but it really technically kind of drops on Monday, which is July 25th, because if you guys do not know, DLCs drop very early in the morning, basically around the same time as weekly updates. So for me, at least, because I'm on Pacific time, that is around 1.15 to 1.30 a.m. that the DLC is going to be dropping. So like I said, basically July 25th, because it's going from July 25th at night into July 26th in the morning when the DLC actually drops. So that being said, I'm going to be live streaming on July 25th at maybe right around 10 p.m. Pacific time, maybe a little bit earlier depending on how I'm feeling, but I'm definitely gonna be streaming at least four to five hours before the DLC actually officially drops, just so I can hang out with you guys, chill out for a little bit, and then of course when the DLC drops, I will be showing you guys and also buying everything that came out with the DLC. So I do hope to see you guys all there at my live stream. Make sure you guys have post notifications turned on so you don't miss out when I do end up going live. Anyway, that's a little bit enough of my promo. Now let's get into this actual DLC and let's talk about what's going to be coming out with it as well as all the really cool changes that's also going to be coming with the DLC. So of course there are lots of changes that are coming to GTA 5 Online when the DLC does drop but there's only two bad things that are going to be coming with those changes so might as well get those two bad things out of the way right now and let's talk about them first. So firstly the Oppressor Mark II which is what I'm driving right now probably the most popular vehicle in the game one of probably the most hated vehicles in the game as well. Anyway, the Oppressor Mark II is going to be getting a nerf with this new DLC. Yes, sadly, it is going to be getting a nerf. And the way that they're going to be nerfing the Oppressor Mark II is by making the missile damage reduce. And they're also going to increase the cooldown on the countermeasures. If you guys do not know what the countermeasures are, that's basically like the flares that protects you from being shot from any other type of missiles while on the Oppressor Mark II. So basically, you're not going to be able to really protect yourself as well as you used to with the Oppressor Mark II. And the missile aren't even going to do as much damage as they're supposed to. So I guess this is kind of like Rockstar's way of countering the griefers in GTA 5 Online. As you guys know, mainly the people who drive a Parcel Mark 2s usually grief people and those griefers are known as KD warriors most of the time and I bring up KD warriors right now because something else that's coming to a change in GTA is going to be the KD system so now if you guys are in public sessions or any session at all and if you kill another online player in GTA it's no longer going to affect your KD so no matter how many people you kill your KD is never going to raise or if you guys get killed a lot by people in sessions your KD is not going to drop the only way you can get your KD up is going to be through competitive game modes such as team death matches and other gun related game modes in GTA. So this is definitely a really good way for Rockstar to attack the griefers in GTA. It's maybe going to make it a little bit less toxic now. So the past two things we've been talking about in the video are bad changes that are coming to GTA Online, but we only have one more bad thing that I need to talk about and after that it's going to be all good news. Now what I'm about to say right now might upset a lot of people, but this is Rockstar's decision and honestly you can't really hate on them for doing this because this is one of the most overpowered ways to make money in the game or this was one of the most overpowered ways to make money in the game and basically what Rockstar is going to be doing is they are going to be nerfing the KO Perico heist yes I said that correctly they are going to be nerfing the KO Perico heist and you're probably wondering how are they going to do this so basically what they're going to be doing is every time you complete a KO Perico heist you're no longer going to be able to start it up right away you're gonna have to wait a 48 minute cooldown and after those 40 minutes are up then you can start up a heist and you have to set it all up of course and then you can do it again so basically you're only gonna be able to really do the KO Perico heist once every hour and like 20 minutes or something like that so it's basically gonna be kind of trash now and they're also gonna make it so the high value target that you get as a primary target once you get a high value target once for the primary after that you're no longer gonna be getting it again which kind of sucks because that means you can only really get the most expensive primary target once and after that you're most likely not going to be getting it and you're going to get the cheaper options which kind of sucks once again because that's basically making it so you get less money when you end up doing the KO Perico heist so yeah that's the
the last bad news. Now let's get into all the good changes that are coming into GTA Online. Now keep in mind when I say all these good changes, these are all the changes. These are just some of the good ones that stick out in my opinion. Now starting off with the first good change, the Sparrow is going to be getting a buff. Now with the Sparrow, you're going to have countermeasures in the back, meaning you can now put flares in the back of your Sparrow. So if you get shot by an Oppressor Mark II or something with missiles, you can now counter it with the flares in the back of a Sparrow. I'm pretty sure I already talked about the KD thing, but your KD can no longer be affected in public sessions or any sessions now in general unless you're in a competitive game mode, which makes perfectly good sense. Now getting into the next change, you're now going to be able to run inside of all buildings. As you guys know, if you guys are inside of like the casino penthouse, if you're inside of the regular casino or any single building like the arena, your apartment or any single building at all, literally, you can't really run inside of it. But now after the DLC comes out, you will be able to run in every single building. Another really cool change that's coming into the game is you'll be able to use your snacks and also your armor through your weapon wheel. So you never have to go through your interaction menu through all those different options just to take snacks and armor you can now do it through your weapon wheel which is pretty cool but probably the biggest and most important change that's coming to gt online with the new dlc is the ability that you guys will now have to sell your cargo goods in invite only sessions you no longer have to be in a public session where you have to worry about people blowing up your cargo while you sell it you can now just be in the invite only session and sell your cargo peacefully which is probably the best thing gta could have added to this new gta DLC but we do have a couple cool changes that are also coming to the game which is going to be instead of owning eight apartments in GTA you're now going to be able to own 10 apartments which makes it so you can get 20 extra garage slots if you guys wanted to and GTA is literally increasing the amount of money that you get for everything in game to balance things out because as you guys know most missions races or literally anything in GTA doesn't pay that much money but when this new DLC comes out they did increase a lot of things when it comes to earning money such as MC contracts, CEO contracts, um, literally everything, adversary modes, races, missions, anything that you can earn money in GTA, they're increasing the pay amount so it actually makes sense. You guys know when you usually do a race or a mission, it pays you like thirty or forty thousand dollars, which literally makes no sense. Thirty or forty thousand dollars is nothing in GTA. So now that they are increasing the amount that you get for these missions and adversary modes, that's really gonna balance things out, and it's actually gonna make people do these adversary modes more often since it's gonna actually be worth it now with the increase in pay but probably the best thing they're going to be increasing in pay is going to be the heist in gta or at least every heist except ko perico because ko perico got the biggest nerf ko perico is basically pointless to do now but here is the absolute biggest change in my opinion that's coming to gta and that's going to be the increase in pay for all of the heists in gta except ko perico so all of the original heists that you guys can start up in your apartment buildings those heists are going to be paying 75 percent more money Money than originally and also the doomsday heist and casino heist are going to pay 50% more money than originally and the KO Preco heist is literally not going to get a bonus anything it's literally just getting nerfed so you can literally say bye bye to the KO Preco heist because nobody's going to be doing that anymore you're most likely going to be doing the original heist or even the casino or doomsday heist since those heists are the only ones that got an increase in pay now as far as the actual DLC and what's going to be coming out with it, we don't know exactly what's going to be coming out. We do know there's going to be a whole bunch of new supercar vehicles that's going to be coming with the DLC. And one of those vehicles is going to be the Camaro, which is what a lot of people are hyped for. But the actual building or the property that's going to be coming out with this new DLC seems like to be a business where you sell exotic sports cars. And the building right here behind me is actually the building where they're going to be putting it at. And the actual location of this building where they're going to going to be putting it at is basically right in front of the record a studios if you guys know where that is record a studios is the location that drop with the contract dlc i'm pretty sure it was called but yeah that is now going to be the end of today's video i just wanted to talk about the dlc with you guys for a little bit in case you guys don't know what's going to be coming as far as changes with the dlc so now you guys do know and hopefully you guys are a little bit more excited for the dlc but like i said i'm going to be live streaming a few hours before the actual dlc ends up dropping on july July 25th right around 10 p.m. Pacific time so make sure you guys have post notifications turned on on my YouTube channel that way when I go live you don't miss out and you get a notification so you guys can stop by and chill with me on the live stream 
Anyway, like I said, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys did want to enjoy. And that's it for me. I will see you guys on my live stream on July 25th.